Let's say you're a gamer, living in an alternative reality, where no game launchers exist to manage your games. That means no Steam. No Epic Games Store. Not even Origin Access, which I'd forgotten about until now. All you have is a loose collection of game icons scattered about your desktop. Well, gamer, what you need is a database. So let's pop open my SQL Server, and write up a table. Insert table, call it video games, game name, developer, got the right data types. Now we add your favorite games to the table, like Battlefield, Beat Saber, Cities Skylines, Elite Dangerous, Hades, Journey, Risk of Rain 2, Rocket League, Stardew Valley. Done. We can simply contribute to this database whenever we download any new games. But, wait, what's that? You can't live without the artwork of your favorite games? Is it possible to add images to your database? The answer is yes, and there's even a couple different ways to do it. Because database systems are different from file storage systems, we cannot simply drop a JPEG into our database. What we'll have to do is, first, get rid of our old, pictureless table. This time, when we create our table, we will add a column named GameArt. The data type we'll use is var binary, set to max. Now, using some special statements, we reference the file location of the image we want to add to the database. And then? Humph. Well. I guess from here on out, I can explain what is supposed to happen. Instead of plopping a JPEG into our database, we convert the image into a string of information. A large string of information. Commonly referred to, as a blob. This string is stored in our game art column, inside our table. When we want to view the art, we have to convert that string back into the JPEG it was created from. Important to note, we only used the file location of the image to create our blob. JPEGs are not stored in our database. But they might as well be, because compared to the size of columns like game name and developer, the storage requirement for blobs is through the roof. The pro of this method is that our image is tied directly to our referential data. There's no chance a query might accidentally mix the artwork between Halo 2 and Halo 3. The cons have everything to do with the space requirement for this solution. Adding images to your database this way, can make your database, huge. Database storage can be far more expensive than file storage. Especially when working with cloud computing companies like Azure or Amazon. Large databases take longer to back up and restore. Meaning, any downtime caused by the need to restore, could be days, instead of minutes or hours. This brings us to method 2. For this method, instead of converting our images into large strings, we leave them exactly how they are, in a file system, separate from our database. This time, we use statements to add a relative file path of our image into the game art column. When we query our database, we only have to look at the location our reference is pointing to, and we have our image. This method is widely used over the blob method. It has been called the best of both worlds. Image files are kept somewhere designed for image files, and the relational data for our games is kept on a database, where it can be queried and manipulated. Because of this, storage is much cheaper, and easier to manage. Backups and restores won't take as long. Cloud services, like Azure and Amazon, offer storage solutions, and database solutions that can link together. They are backed up independently from each other. Navigating your image files can be easier, because you can use existing file explorers. However, 
some things you have to be wary of. If you hard code your image file locations, then restoring your database and image files to another server will break your solution entirely. For this reason, your file paths must be relative, and not absolute. For similar reasons, you must update both the database and the file storage locations at the same time. You don't want to delete an image without removing its file path from the game art column. The consequences of doing so might reach beyond your new, alternate reality. Untangling the fabric of all known universes, causing unimaginable ripples in time and space. Or it might just cause a runtime error in your database. In the end, the file path reference method provides the most value when designing a table that needs images in it. By allowing referential data, and image data, to reside in their respective environments, you avoid headaches relating to paying for, and manipulating, giant databases. <laughs>